Okay, hello to week eight. We are at the beginning of August and four more weeks to go. Last week, we learned about visualization. We learned a few uh, plots. So this week also, we will continue with more plots. We're gonna learn a little more. And after that, we can jump to our real projects. Okay, let's go and see what we have this week. So the first things that this week we're gonna learn is a scatter plot. What is a scatter plot? When we use it and when we need to use and with what purpose we should use this scatter plot, okay? A scatter plot, uh, we need to two data sets like x and y that create a points okay exactly like line plot but that's different okay like line plot here also that x and y make a point okay and this is scatter plot comes and show that points on our graphs in a scatter plot we use two data set or two like attributes in X axis and Y axis. So what we put in X axis? Mostly commonly we use a scatter plot to figure out the relationship and correlation between two attributes, okay? Which one of them is dependent variable or attribute and the second one is dependent variable, okay? What is independent variable? Independent variable is like something that doesn't affect with other attributes like time. Time doesn't change with pressure or I don't know, uh, temperature or other things, okay? Time is all the time, time I'm going in a like continuous interval. Dependent variable can be temperature, temperature can change or pressure during a time can, can change, temperature can change, this kind of things, we call them dependent variable. Dependent variable in a scatter plot come and sit in x axis, okay? In x axis part, we all the time put our dependent variable. And x, well, x axis is independent variable, okay? Then we come and figure out the relationship that they have. How? So, when we put this X and Y and create that points, actually a scatter plot pops up that uh, dots or points on the graph. Sometimes these dots and points comes up and create a shape, a shape like a upward, like upward line or downward line or like a curve or some kind of shapes. When we have this kind of shapes, we understand, oh, some relationship goes on between these two attributes. Otherwise, if like I have a dot like here, the other one in this corner, the other one in that corner, and we cannot figure out any shape, there is no correlation, okay? Okay, when we have that dots close to each other, like a, it, a shape, like a curve or line or something, then we understand there is a relationship and what we do. In line plot, we learn that the line comes and um, add this um, dots to each other and create that line. But here, a scatter plot doesn't work like that. Doesn't like uh, uh, related or uh, doesn't attach that uh, dots to each other, okay? Here, when we see that um, shape, we come up and we can tell our program, okay, now let's create a line according to this relationship, okay? But that line is not aligned to like uh, related or attached that does to each other. It is the average, mostly is average of that lines, okay? And comes up, like creates a line on top of that line, so like an upward line or downward line or something like that, okay? From that line, 
what we can understand. Mostly here, we do regression analysis. We call this regression analysis, okay? That lie can come and give us, um, give us formula, line formula, okay? We can use that formula for prediction, for regression analysis. Like after that, so here I did my experiment. I have my X, Y and that dots, and I create this graph. Now I created my line. Now I come and I like um, create that formula, take out that formula. Okay, now I have formula. What we can do with this formula? Okay, like in a lab um, analysis, I can use them and say, okay, when my temperature is 200, I don't need to go back and do the experience. I just come up and put my data in this formula. So I said, okay, now my temperature is 200. Let's see how pressure change. And take out the Y, the value of Y, which is the changes of uh, my uh, pressure. See? We calculate and we use this as scatterplot or regression analysis, mostly like this. Now let's go and learn how to create a, a scatter plot together, okay? Okay. We are in week eight and we are learning this scatter plot. The first thing, so a scatter plot also is a visualization from that um, pie plot module from Matplotlib. Then let's import that. Import matplotlib.pyplot. And let's uh, make it short as plt, okay? Now I create my X and Y, whatever you want, you can just put there, okay? Some, even the name of variable of X or Y, whatever name that you want, you can just put it there, okay? X and Y. So remember, because it's gonna create our dots and point, the number of values inside the X should be same inside, uh, with Y, okay? So I gonna put some numbers like, for X, I gonna put like, one, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, nine, nine, zero, four. How many? Get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten. I'm gonna put ten values in Y also. So I'm gonna put like minus five, zero. Nine, four, two, three, one, eight, seven, three. Okay, how many? How many this is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now ten. Now we can call a scatter function from this matplotlib dot pipeline. Okay, we made it short. Plt dot a scatter, a scatter. Okay. The first thing that we pass through this scatter plot is our x and y. So the first argument that we pass all the time sit in x axis. Okay, I pass this x and then y. Now let's run it. Run it two times if it doesn't show, okay? See, nice. I have this graph, but we can clearly see that there is no relation between two attributes. There's some numbers that from my mind, I just put it there and there's no like a uh, relationship, okay. Now what else we can do in a scatter plot? So anything that we learn in line plot, we can add it here, like we can go and put some names on axis and changing colors and do that kind of things, okay? So I'm gonna go and uh, put title. So we call title function, title, okay? 
title can be like a scatter plot. A scatter plot and bottles. I can put also uh, called the X uh, label and Y label function. Do you remember X label for X axis? I gonna put a name for this one, call it like X axis, okay? And then I gonna call also Y label. I gonna put a label for my Y axis, okay? Y axis, I gonna call this one. Let's run it. Now I have that naming and everything. So if I change, so I said this line, that's a scatter, uh, represent these dots, okay? If I want to change the color, so I can go and change the color from inside this uh, function, a scatter function, put color, call color argument, okay? Or passing uh, color argument. So either writing color or C. C also represents color, okay? For, to make it short, we can just write C. C equal and like what red blue black no b mean blue k mean black okay k mean black okay let's run this one or like let's make it yellow okay so we learned this uh, before let's see what new like a uh, function a scatter plot has uh sometimes we want to sometimes we want to like uh, see how our dot contribute in our graph. Okay, I want to make a line. So mostly from zero zero like this kind of line. And okay, I want to see how my dots in which part of my graph my dots is more or something like that. We want to divide it and then like do some uh, analysis on it. So there is some function call it x vertical line, x uh, horizontal line, okay? We can use that functions to create these lines on our graph. Okay, let's go and call that functions too. PLT, from this PLT, we're gonna call AX V, V mean vertical, okay? V mean vertical, vertical line, V line function, okay? Inside, this function, what we pass. The argument that we pass here, so this is vertical line. It's gonna create a vertical line anywhere that we want. So if I put eight or six, okay? If I put six, see, it came and create this vertical line on value six, okay? I want to make it like two by two, okay? I want to make two by two, a line horizontal and vertical over value two. I'm gonna put two inside this one, and I'm gonna make that horizontal line also, plt dot x, h mean horizontal, okay? Horizontal line. And let's put two also here. So nice, nice, we have it. We can also change the color, change uh, line of style, whatever we want, okay? If this vertical one, I want to change just the color, like call, um, color equal what? Equal red. And also line of style. The argument is LS for line of style. Okay, LS mean line of style equal what? Like something like this. See how it keep uh, changing all this kind of things. And other things that we can change here, okay, in color part, there is a feature, okay, sometimes we have all these dots and a lot of dots, okay. I want to say if my dot is like, my dot is like larger in uh, like close to eight, then put, make them like, uh, make them more uh, darker. And the one is far away or less, make them like lighter. We can do this kind of thing. So uh, it call it C map. So here we put this yellow co color here, okay? 
inside this one, we can call C map. I mean, color map. It call it color map. Okay. We can use that color map. There is argument in this line. Write your argument. Okay. We're going to add another argument to see how it's going to change everything here. Like color, no, C map. Color map means C map. Equal what? C map equal a spectral, okay? We have this S should be with capital letters, a spectral, a spectral. And okay, when we add this C map, we all the time need to say something, okay? A spectral mean changing color, okay? But it's gonna come and get confused, say, Okay, according to what I need to keep changing color. So I'm gonna say, according to this Y axis, for example, okay, the Y value. If my Y value increase, then make it darker or make it lighter or something, okay? Therefore, I should put this C or my color equal to this Y values, okay? So therefore, instead this yellow, I'm gonna delete this yellow and I put my Y axis. Whatever name that you put it here, okay? You just put it equal this Y axis, okay? Now let's run it. Oh, see how it changed, okay? According to the color map that we have here, it starts changing this kind of things, the color around that dot. We have another um, argument. So C have this uh, like, dot is not that much visible, we can make like edge, edge color, okay? We have argument, it called edge color. Edge color equal like black. K mean black, okay? See how nicely it's gonna show it. So for C map, um, I think this color doesn't like mention because there is red here and blue, so it doesn't show uh, if it is lighter or darker. Um, for color map, we have this color map in Matplotlib. Matplotlib color map. Let's see what they have. Choosing color map. Choosing color map in Matplotlib. Okay, here, see, the, these are all color, color map that we have in Matplotlib. So here also put the name, use just this name inside a spectral that it's gonna like display for us. Uh, let me, I want to, I want to put what? I want to put this pink. Let's see how this pink gonna change it. Pink. Okay, it is darker when it is less and it is lighter when it goes up. See? Uh, what else they have? Okay, here, so I want to like get darker when it increase. So I can just go and create my like, Blues, 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 and then run it. Okay, see now, here, I'm gonna close this one. Okay, here, when it is less, it is like lighter, and it increase, it get like darker. Now we have this color. When someone look at our graph, may not understand what is this, or what is going on in this one, okay? So, Anytime we use color, okay, in our data, so we need to show what is that color, what it represents, the lighter, the darker. Here, therefore, we use that, um, we use a color bar, okay? We use color bar. Let's use this color bar. PLT dot color bar. Let's call this color bar function and just run it. See how nicely it display my color bar. Okay, 
if it is lighter, it's more like closer to minus four. And if it is like darker, it's uh, like uh, increase the value. So nicely, see? And what else we have here? That's it, color bar. We can change, you can change the uh, orientation of this color bar, okay. Color bar is here, you can put in uh, along with X axis, okay? So like horizontal, if I want to put it horizontal, I can say orientation equal what? Orientation equal horizontal, horizontal. Let me see. See, now how this color bar orientation came and change uh, the orientation of uh, my color bar that I have. So this is all about a scatter plot. That regression part, we're gonna learn it in project, okay? We have a regression project next week. Other things about a scatter plot, so is 3D scatter plot. We can also create this 3D scatter plot, okay? Um, I'm gonna go quickly through this 3D scatter plot, okay? Uh, you may use it, you may not, but the code is all the time there that you can go through that code and say, okay, let's go and learn this 3D scatter plot quickly too. 3D scatter plot is query. It has three dimensions in set two. Therefore, we have X, Y, and Z. We're gonna add the Z also. For 3D scatter plot or 3D visualization, we use another like module. Okay, here we were using PyPlot, okay, from Matplotlib. But to use this 3D uh, scatter plot, we need to use a Matplotlib uh, or, yes, Matplotlib plot 3D, Matplotlib plot 3D, something like that, okay, module. I mean, mplot 3D module from Matplotlib toolkits, okay? Therefore, we need to, there is a three line of code that we're gonna add here to be able to use this 3D scatter plot, okay? Just three line one. Here, let's go and start. See how we need to create this uh, 3D graph, okay? First, we need to import our module and whatever that we use, okay? Here, from, from Matplotlib, MPL, MPL toolkits, toolkits dot mplot 3D, mplot 3D module import, import access, access 3D, okay? Access 3D here. Now, we need to create a graph and mention the dimension of this graph. We need to mention dimension of that graph and say, okay, this th a graph is supposed to be three dimensions, okay? Let's go and do that part, okay? Like, I'm gonna create figure, okay, or graph. So we're gonna, uh, from plot, like this one, from this one, I'm gonna call function of figure. Okay, function of figure. Because I use this line, so I'm gonna create a variable and put that variable equal to this line because I want to use it in next line. Okay, I just call it graph or something. Equal this figure. Here I come and say dimension of this graph is like 3D. So I create a variable. So Maybe we later use it, but here we don't use it. Okay. Dimension, I say this graph, graph is three dimension. Therefore, I'm calling function. I call add subplot function. I call add subplot function. Add, add underline subplot. Okay. 
I add this three, uh, three one here, and then projection, the way that I want to display it is 3D, that's it, 3D, okay? This is the main three lines, okay? Anytime we create this 3D, we first just come and you can copy paste this three lines, that's it. Here, let's go and add our Z axis. So we have X, Y, I want to add the Z axis. Let's put it Y, three, two, four, five. eight, seven, six, and zero. Okay, now it is 10. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need one more, okay, ten. Uh, okay, here we're gonna come in this scatter plot that we had, okay? We're just gonna come and also add that Z axis, okay? Just add your Z axis here. and try to run it. See, now it shows the 3D points of this like, graph that we have. That's all about the 3D graph, okay? So the code is all the time here in your uh, PowerPoint. You can call it this code. Okay. Okay, now let's learn a new graph, a new chart. The next chart, so we learned this a scatter plot. Now let's learn pie chart. Okay. You may saw this pie chart a lot. Okay, the pie, uh, pie chart is a good uh, way to show that percentage. Okay, we mostly use this pie chart to see the shares and amount of shares, which one is more, which one is less, and show that percentage and that kind of things. Here, I put uh, like here in this monthly expenses chart, you see, so I have some expenses, to hold my expenses, okay? Then I said um, uh, like, a part of my money goes to rent, for food, utilities, and that kind of thing. Now I want to see which part is more and how many percent it is and that kind of thing, okay? Now here, we're gonna go. So in pie chart, actually, we just need one attribute. Mostly we just use one attribute, okay? I chart, okay. Okay, now let's go and see how we can create our pie chart. So let's first, the first thing I said, we need one uh, attribute, which can be our values or something that we want to put in that pie chart and display it on pie chart, okay? I'm gonna call it values. So this is the values that I'm gonna pass to my pie chart, okay? These values can be anything. Let's give the same example. So for example, if you learn, a rent, so the rent is one uh, or 1500 and utilities can be 300 utilities and what we have personal items like shampoo or something else that we buy is 100 and we have clothes that we buy is 200 and what else we have food, food is like 300 per month. So that kind of things, okay? Now I'm gonna come and pass this one to my pie chart. So 
I can call pi um, function from that plt, okay? plt dot pi. Let's pass these values in my pi chart. Let's run it. So nice, see? Here is my pie chart, but it doesn't have anything to display on it because we didn't mention it. So the first thing, so I supposed to know what is this color mean? What this part is, so what is the blue part? This is a kind of labels, okay? We need to label each part, okay? Have become a label, this pie, uh, this pi uh, function has an argument called uh, labels, okay? Labels, we need to create that labels part. La comma, labels. Equal, so inside this list, a label for all values that I have here. Therefore, the number of labels that I have here it should be same with these values. And in the correct, uh, in the correct uh, place, for example, the first name that I passed it to this label consider as my rent, because here is the rent value, okay? So I gonna put it like what? The first one is rent. The second one was utilities. Okay, they are a string. Put them inside the quotation mark, okay? Don't forget this quotation mark, okay? Like rent. The second one was utilities. Utilities and Uh, the third one was personal items. You can put A, B, C, anything that you want, okay? And then this personal items, utilities, and clothes, I said. Clothes, and then food. Okay, this gets so long here, I can just grab Cut it from here and put it up, okay? Make a space and put all these labels here. Create a variables and just pass the variables equal to this label, okay? Because if anything that we want to create like this, it's gonna make it so long out mm, function, okay? I'm gonna cut, cut it from here. I'm gonna put it here and create a variable. Put all this line equal a variable and just pass the variable equal to this label, okay? What, like name? It is name, something like that, okay, name. And here I'm passing name, okay? I'm passing name. Uh, don't get confused with variables and a string type of uh, values, okay? Whatever it is, a string type of value, so you put it in quotation mark. But whatever is a variable, we don't put it inside the quotation mark, okay? Don't get confused with that. We have these labels here. Now let's run it. See how nice it actually displayed all these um, labels here. So nice. Um, here, this code is all the data, all the data about this uh, pie chart. If you don't want to display this data, go and call the function show, plt.show, okay? Call this function and run it. So this function just make you write up that old codes and um, data of our pie chart that we had, okay? What else we need to add? So here I don't have my like percentage, the most important 
part of using this pie chart using that uh, percentage, okay? For uh, displaying percentage on our pie chart, we use auto percentage argument, auto percentage argument. So in pi function, we pass an argument, we pass an argument, call it auto percentage, auto percentage, okay? Auto percentage equal equal we put it inside the quotation mark whatever we want to pass here auto percentage we put the sign of this percentage put the sign of that then 0, 0.0 put 0, 0.0 then f f is the type of the value that i want to display on my uh, pie chart okay float f in float float then Percentage, percentage, okay? Here, let's run it. See how nicely it come and print, hold the percentage. It automatically go and calculate the percentage and then put it there for us. This 0, 0.0, this 0, 0.0 mean uh, the way that we want to display this percentage, okay? After this dot is zero. If I put two, it displays two number after the small point. See? Now it comes and calculate this um, decimal points for us. It gets fit. So if I want to change the size, if I want to change the size, uh, we can change the radius. This pie chart has some argument called a uh, radius, so we can keep changing the size of this circle, okay? Here, I'm gonna go and call, pass that argument, which is radius, okay? Radius equal, by default, it is one. If I want to make it bigger, so I can make like 1.5. See how it increased it. So nicely. There is another um, features in this pie chart that we can use it. And it is, um, it call it explode, okay? It call it explode. Let's go and try to add that explode argument, see how it's gonna change. At the end of this pi function, I'm passing argument called explode. Explode, okay? Explode equal what? Did I delete something here? I think so. Okay. So explode, see how I'm passing numbers here. Zero, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. How many is here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I put this explode here and I pass it this like, uh, I pass it five values according to amount of value that I have here. I have five and I pass five values here. So let's see if I change the last one, what's gonna happen, okay? Zero, I gonna put like 0 0.2. Let's change this one or any one that you want in something, 0 0.2, not that much big, okay? Let's run it. What's happened from my display? I just don't want to see all this data here, so I'm gonna call that plt dot show function. Okay. Now it's nice. See what explode does. Explode comes and push out that part of data that we mentioned by zero point two. By zero point two, it pushed out that part of data and just give a nice feature to us. So here, 
this is the last value that I put actually come and sit instead of food. Okay, mention food here. See food. If I want to if I want to push out this personal item, personal item is three. So I gonna put like zero point zero point like five. See how nicely it pushed out actually this personal item more because it's like zero zero point five here. See? So nice. What else? I think. Yep. Now let's go to our next uh, plot. Okay. Our next plot. Do you have any question? A scatter plot or pie chart? We are good with that too. Okay. If you are good with that too, let's go and learn about box plot, okay? And see what box plot is. Box plot is also one of that data visualization or graph that we use a lot, okay, in our um, in our data and uh, data analysis. In box plot, we pass only one attribute, okay, one set of data not X and Y, just one, okay? And what this box plot show us? See in this picture, see in this picture, okay? I have a box and some line and some dot out of the range. So the minimum, the minimum line of my box plot comes and show the minimum number, the minimum value of that data set that I have so so this the last the last line is my minimum okay the smallest value in my set of data that I have it showed that one from this line to the edge of the box to the edge of the box is my first 25 percent of data okay first 25 percent of data so here it's a 25% of data sit between minus five or almost like one. Minus five or till one is 25% of data that I have. And this edge, it call it lower quartile or 25%. The first edge is lower quartile or 25%, okay? Then the yellow, um, orange or yellow line that we have is median. So lower quarter till median is our uh, 50%, okay? Here was uh, zero to 25, and here is 25 to 50%, okay? 25 to 50% of data that we have. And then we reach the median. From the median to the next edge of our box, which the next edge of our box is upper quartile. Upper quartile or 75%, okay? Upper quartile or 75%. Because median was line of 50%, then 50 to upper quartile gets 75% uh, of data that they have, okay? And then from this upper quartile to the next line, is my 75 or upper, like 100%. That's whole my data. The range of whole my data sit in this box, okay? The last line is my maximum value that I have, okay? Maximum value that I have. Why we use this box? So most of the time when we want to arrange like a set of data and see how my data also contributes or is, okay, I said, like I have the age of like, I have a kind of participant, so I want to see their age. So this can show the age, the median age that my participant has, okay? I come and tell, okay, 25% of my, like the age of participant is between five years old to 15 years old. 
and a small amount is like uh, or that 50% is like 50% uh, up is like between like 20 to 30 years old and that kind of things okay we use mostly for that kind of things if you saw that you have a dot you have a dot somewhere in your graph it's outlier we call it outlier what is outlier outlier is a point is one part of data which is which is out of normal range of data so like all my um participant is from range of like five years old to 30 years old and suddenly i have one person which age is 80 years old so it is an outlier is something out of the normal range of age that i have okay that call it outliers let's go and see how we can create this box okay Okay, my box plot. So first I'm creating a set of data. I, I call it just data, okay? Data equal, it should be inside the list, as a list, okay? Let's put any number that you want. Put just any number that you want, like four, six, seven, eight, nine, three, two, two, three, four, five, seven, zero, zero, one, ten, what else? I want to put um, six, four, eight. And I want to put also minus nine and one like 17 minus nine and 17 and here we come and call box plot from that plt okay high plot module from matplotlib plt dot box plot okay and now let's pass this data to our box plot. See how nice, okay. This lower outlier, a dot out of the box, a dot out of the box is outlier is considered as minus nine, okay, minus nine. And the upper one is 17. So we say from here, my, in this box how we like analyze it we come and say okay this line is my mm, like minimum or lower part okay like minimum value my minimum value is zero among all the data set that i have and my maximum value is 10 so here if i may actually and the median of all this number is around like 4.5 or 4, something like that, the median that shows, okay? I calculated the median and shows that one. And my like 25%, the lower 25% or the lower quartile is like around what? From zero to like three, something like that, okay? And then from like lower to upper, hold the box, mostly commonly so from lower to upper is where most of my data set there okay inside the box so this is lower quartile upper quartile is say most of the value is among two to like eight or seven something like that okay and we have this maximum the maximum number is 10. And this is the way that we use this portalize to analyze our data like this, okay? So this was the whole 
up to date. Yes. We have also Instagram, but this is so long. Let's put it for next. Okay. Today we we'll learned that a scatter plot, 3D scatter plot, and pie chart and box one. Okay. So do you have any other question? Do you have any question of these plots? So otherwise, so we are good to go and we are done with today's lecture. Please, if you have any question, ask me. Otherwise, I'm gonna see you Thursday. Thank you, bye. You're welcome, bye. Actually, may I ask a question after the class, after the recording? Yes, do you want me to stop it? Uh, yeah, I mean, this question is from previous okay. class, but now. Do you want to stop all the